This is not gonna work. Oh, fucking hell, it's working. Holy Oh, I'm doing something I said I'd never do, flying over Upper Stony Creek. Trying to stay out of airspace here, it's so hard. I'm getting an amazing glide at the moment. It's currently 20 to one. What an unbelievable flight. Warm enough. Denimo Tensor Mummy 20, oh, 360 grams. Sweet, super comfy, and um, sleep's super important. So, I'm halfway up Brest Peak. I camped up here on the ridge last night. It's actually quite windy. Had an epic night's sleep. I was pretty knackered. It's half seven, looking like a cracker day. Plan is to walk up to the Brest Hill summit so that I can take off on the north faces into Timaru Creek. And then the intention is to plan to try and fly in the direction of Mount Cook. I don't know if actually making Mount Cook will be possible, Having a look at the forecast, it looks a bit trickier close to Mount Cook. I just wanted to show you quickly what I'm talking about here. This is a look at the buoyancy to shear ratio for the day. And if you look at the area closer to Mount Cook, the thermal strength drops and the stipples increase. At least I'd like to try and make Ohau or the Ben Ohau range and try and fly the flats maybe or end up at a Marimur. Or... So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'll Likely try and get into the Ahuriri, cross onto the barrier range if I can. What a cool adventure. I've got a couple hours hiking to do. I'll probably stop at the hut for breakfast where they've got water, rehydrate, get some food in me. At least an hour and a half to the hut at the least. Maybe a bit more. And then probably another hour to the summit. So hopefully you'll be on the summit by 11. In the air by 12. Breakfast at the hut. Just taking the opportunity to do some laundry. Using the power of the sun. I'm just waiting for, there's Leo and Dana coming up. Um, so I'm gonna have some breakfast here and hang out for them. And then the plan is to walk up to the summit of Breast Peak, which should, shouldn't take me any more than an hour. So I'll probably leave here at the latest 10 so I can get up there for 11. And there's Cumulus forming above me now. And I can see over towards the Ahururi. Yeah, it's working there already, but uh, we're quite, obviously quite a low cloud base. So it's looking good. Some cirrus still, but not heaps. I'm up here with D-Pugs. Leo mm. Shell. Living the dream. He's back. How was the pub last night, Leo? Really great, actually. I regret not going then to the pub. Ended up staying at the five-star Volbiv accommodation in Lake Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll try and go that way, I guess. Looks, yes. looks good at the moment. But no cumulus on our, our ridge, really. Um, I'm not in a mad rush. Um, what are we on? Half 11. So at least another half an hour and it might start turning on. But every other range around us has got nice cumulus on it. It does. It's starting to nicely develop. But yeah, it'd be nice if we can do some valley hopping and go and get up to uh, Mount Cook sort of area. The lake's yes. like glass, eh? I know, right? See, I looked, I was going to just walk up Mount Maud, but I looked at the forecast for Mount Maud and it looked terrible. <laughs> Oh, such lovely wind for takeoff. I'm just uh, arriving on Corner Peak, and uh, the boys are below me. Leo looks like he's got a bit more work to do. 
Pugsley's not far behind. Gonna follow the ridge and then maybe fly up the Dingleburn. That's worth turning. Just approaching cloud base and the ridge that separates the Dingle Burn and Timmery Creek. Dan's just over there. Leo's down there. And it's decision time soon. Gotta decide if we're gonna go up the Huxleys or up the Dingle Burn. I'm nearing the head of Timaru Creek. And this climb feels like it's an important one to mean I don't land at the head of the creek. Just got a hearty four meters a second sink on the way here. Oh, this is good. And uh, I'll be jumping into the Ahururi soon. If you're enjoying the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can support the channel by hitting the subscribe button. I'm crossing the Ahariri. It's been pretty good so far. It's quite cold. I didn't get a climb there before crossing, which would have been good, but I'm leaving at 7,000 feet. Should be enough. So I don't know what's going on here. It's a bit weird on the barrier range. It's pushing down from the northwest, which we did see in the forecast. Oh well, I'm pretty sure the northwest is in. I just got a climb and it's drifted me all the way back here. We were going up in the middle of the valley and uh, lenticula are forming. And I'm getting pushed down this way and I think that rough stuff in the middle of the valley would have been maybe where the southwest and the northwest was moving. I think I'm gonna land in the Arari. It's like getting too windy here. Oh so the lads have landed down in the Ahariri, which is a shame. But there's strong wind actually at the top of the valley, so um, I think they just wanted to call it a day. And uh, I turned around as well, because uh, it was too uh, gnarly at the top there. The Northwest seems to be pushing, pushing down in places, which is weird because the clouds are definitely going Southwest up high, but then you've got Lenticula, so, yeah, tricky day. Oh, well, that thermal took me much higher than I was expecting. I'm up at 9,000 feet. I just wanted to pause here for a second to explain the mistake I made in analyzing this situation that ultimately led to me landing on the ground. So what I should have done here was follow this prominent ridge line that leads up to the west facing side of the Ohau ski field, which has the nice cloud above it. But what I did instead was just to skip this ridge, take the more direct line and try and arrive on the back of the ski field and then climb up to the cloud. Unfortunately, um, as you see in the next clip, as I'm gliding over, I notice a nice cumulus cloud forming above the ridge. And when I arrive on the back of the ski field, I'm presented with easterly wrapping around and then ultimately northerly.
All right, so I'm um, flying up towards the Yoha ski field. I got bloody northerly up here. So the current plan is to go to the pub. But I'm a ways off yet and I've got a headwind. Oh, that's it. I'm calling it a day. What a cool trip. It's northerly's hard work in this valley, so I'm just gonna try and glide as close to the pub as I can. All right, now just to land as close as I can to the pub as possible. Oh, what a trip. So good. And I've landed right next to the lodge. So I'm going to pack up and I'm going to go and get a beer. And I really hope they sell burgers. And then I'll hitchhike back. Oh, that was hard work today. Um, hit the northerly earlier than expected. And this high cloud kind of shut things down. But you can see these lenticular clouds. That is an uh, indication of strong winds up high. And um, it usually gets a bit rough when there's lenticular around. But um, oh, it's just stunning here. I mean, it looks really good on the Benno house. Um, just getting over there would have been really hard. And I wonder if it's the same northerly pushing down on the surface that would make things difficult. But we'll never know. Or maybe we will. Maybe someone else is flying up there today. Mm -hmm. 